But suddenly, the wave starts thinking, ocean is an enemy. When it is created, when it exists, or when it drops, it is connected to ocean. But the ocean starts thinking, it is somewhere different from ocean. The wave starts thinking, it is different from ocean. Not only that, the wave starts fighting with ocean. Starts fighting with ocean. We are all waves of this divine. We are all part of this whole. Please be very clear, you cannot exist as an island. You cannot exist as an island. The prana which is going inside your body and which is coming out is not your property. It is the property of existence. And if the prana doesn't function, what you think as you will not be able to function. What you think as you, you whatever you think as you, cannot function if the prana doesn't go in or come out. Prana means the vital energy. The very source of your life is not your property. Again and again we think we end here, the world starts here. Please be very clear, this is not your boundary. This is not your boundary. We always think our body end, where our body ends, our boundary ends. Whatever is outside, whatever is outside is existence. And we always think whatever is outside is our enemy. That is why we continuously try to protect ourselves. We try to protect ourselves from others. Whomsoever you see, we always look at them with the eyes, what far he has come. <laughs> what he is going to steal from me? What he is going to take from me? How he is going to exploit me? Continuously you are in the protecting mood. The moment you see somebody, you have started your calculation. What far he is here and what I should do before he does anything to me. You are ready. Always we are calculating because we feel threatened by the existence of other. The moment you think the existence or the whole is your enemy, you will start defending. Please be very clear. Defending is nothing but a polite word for offending. All over the world, all the militaries are called defensive army. Then who is offending? Every country claims, my army is defensive force, defense army. Then which, who is offending? Please be very clear. The very idea of defending is nothing but subtle way of offending. Subtle way of offending. The other day, I was hearing an interview of a leader. He says that we are not ready to wait. We straight away want to go and destroy the enemy. This very clearly shows our offending attitude. Be very clear. All defending is directly or indirectly offending. It is offending. When you feel the whole is your enemy, except you, everybody is enemy, continuously you fight, continuously you start fighting. The fighting mood creates more and more violent feeling in you, more and more restlessness in you. First thing Krishna teaches as the Raja Vidya Raja Ruhyam, means the secret of secrets. Existence is not your enemy. Existence is not your enemy. It responds to your thoughts. It continuously cares for you. It is intelligence. Please be very clear. If you live with the attitude of enmity, even when you die, even when you live, you will be dying. 
constantly you will be tortured. When you live with the attitude of enmity with the whole, constantly you will be tortured. When you live with the feeling of friendliness, with the attitude, the existence is friend. Existence is your own. Naturally, you will feel a deep easiness. One thing, above all, more than the easiness, you will feel deeply connected to the existence. If wave starts thinking, it is different from ocean. And if the wave starts defending itself from the ocean, all we need to understand is how much wave tries to defend itself from the ocean, it is going to fall into the same ocean. As a nature, wave starts in the ocean, exists in the ocean and is going to fall into the ocean. If it understands it is part of the ocean, it will be utterly relaxed. It will live the blissful life. If it doesn't understand, it will fight with the ocean, but it will fall into the ocean. The ultimate secret which Krishna wants to reveal is existence, parashakti, Brahman, is your friend. The universal energy is not your enemy. It is intelligence and it responds to your thoughts. This is the first understanding. Next, in this chapter, he says, I am that he says i am the whole existence In the next chapter he gives the experience of the cosmic consciousness to arjuna these three chapters are step by step in the first he says don't have enmity with existence next he says i am that same energy not only you don't have to have existence have a deep love. You don't have to have enmity. Yesterday's chapter says, drop your enmity against universal energy, Brahman and Atman. Today he starts how to be connected, how to feel connected to the existence. Tomorrow in the Visuruva Darshan Yoga, he gives the experience to Arjuna that the whole cosmic consciousness is He. He is in the whole cosmic consciousness. Yesterday He removes the enmity. Today He creates the feeling of connectedness. Tomorrow He gives the Advaitic experience. All these three chapters are step by step. Step by step, they are elevating Arjuna from low level to higher level. Let us study the Shastra with intense devotion and a deep sincerity. Along with Arjuna, we will also grow. Along with Arjuna, we will also grow. We will not miss it. Krishna says, for your benefit, because you are my dear friend, I shall speak to you further, giving knowledge that is better than what I have already explained. Please be very clear. Krishna is explaining his glory, not for his sake, for Arjuna's sake. Krishna is not explaining his glory to, to show his ego. No. We need to understand an important thing. Ego of the king is based on how many persons accept him as a king. The more number of persons accept his ego, the more his ego will be. Suddenly, if all the ministers and all the warriors and all his citizens are taken away from him, what will happen to his kingdom? 
Or what will happen to his kinghood? He will lose the very base. He will lose the very idea. He will not be any more king. His very ego will be totally shaken. Beautiful story. There was a great saint called Dakshinamurti Swami. He lived in, in Tamil Nadu. At his, when he was alive, when he was with the body, one king came to meet him. This Dakshinamurti Swami never used to wear a dress. He will live a uh, Paramahamsa life. He never used to wear any dress. He is just like a child. He will live happily. He was sitting under a big tree and meditating blissfully. This king came to see him. And the king expected that Swami should stand up and receive him with all the respect. And this Swami did not bother. He did not even care about the king. King came with all his ego and said, What? You are an ordinary beggar. I am a king. Don't you know how to respect me? King, the Swami started laughing. He said, Actually, you are the beggar. You are begging the respect from me. <laughs> you are begging respect from me. You feel respected only when somebody gives. But I don't feel respected even somebody gives. And I don't feel that I am disrespected when somebody doesn't give. When somebody respects me or not, somebody respects me or not is no way related to my consciousness. I am not asking you, why are you not respecting me? I don't bother about you. The moment you ask, be very clear, you are a beggar. Then he says, your personality or your ego can be shaken when all your army people leave you. When your ministers leave you. So you being a king is dependent on somebody. Be very clear. That is why always these leaders are in trouble. Never think leaders are leading you. You are leading the leaders. The honest truth is you are leading the leaders because as long as you accept them as leader only, they can be leader. As you are bothered about their ideas, they are also bothered about your ideas. Continuously, they are bothered about our ideas. Dakshinamurti Swami says, You are king as long as your citizens accept you. So naturally, directly or indirectly, you will be begging your citizens to accept you because your consciousness is dependent on them. In my case, that is not the case. Whether somebody accepts or not, I am quite blissful. I am Paramahamsa. My Paramahamsa would can never be taken away from me. But your kinghood can be taken away from you. So be very clear. The moment you ask, for respect, you are beggar, I am not. Truth, a clear truth, whose ego is enriched by more and more citizens, is called politician, egoistic. But who reveals himself for the sake of disciples' understanding is enlightened man. Here, Krishna is not speaking about himself out of ego. Whether Arjuna accepts or not, Krishna is Krishna. Krishna was in blissful even before Arjuna became his disciple. Krishna will be in blissful state even after Arjuna becomes his disciple. Whether Arjuna is disciple or not, Krishna is in that same blissful consciousness. One important thing, in the next chapter, tomorrow, Arjuna says, Oh Krishna, forgive me. I called you by your community name. Hey Krishna, hey Yadava, hey Saketi. I called you by your first name. I called you by your community name. In India, 
if you are very close friend, only then you call them by a community name. You call that person with the, by his community name. He says, I called you by your community name. Yadava means the Krishna's community. I called you Krishna, Yadava, and I called you, oh my friend. I called you with all these names thinking that you are my friend. You are a normal human being like me. But now I understand you are Lord of Devatas. You are Deva of Devatas. You are Mahadeva. Forgive me. Please, I beg. You must forgive me and accept me as your disciple for my ignorance. I do not know your greatness. Forgive me. Because of this statement, Krishna's ego has not become big. One thing, Krishna was saved. He had all the glory from day one to till the end. Even with all his glory, he allowed Arjuna to call him by all these first names and community names. He never said, don't you know, you don't know who am I? How dare you call me by, by my first name? <laughs> he never carried his visiting card. This carrying visiting card is the biggest problem. See, in your own life, how people behave, wherever they go, first thing, do you know who am I? <laughs> do you know who am I? Do you know who am I? We always carry the visiting card. First thing we will give that card. And not only that, important thing, please be very clear, never think your visiting card is this size. It is cut out size. Because you can't carry that, you carry in a small way. It is cut out size. Because we cannot carry that anywhere, wherever we go, we carry it in a small way. After giving that card, we say, I am this, I am that. Always we carry our visiting card. Krishna never carried. Krishna never bothered. Even when Arjuna was talking with him in a friendly way, he was humbled. The way in which Arjuna speaks, the same way he responds. Suddenly now Arjuna says, Arjuna, Krishna, I don't know. You are such a great person. You are God himself. Please forgive me. Even after that, Krishna has never become egoistic. He says, don't worry, don't bother about that. He is simple, he is humble. Even after that, Krishna is saying, before, at the time of experience, and after the experience, Krishna is same. Only Arjuna undergoes a tremendous change. Before the Gita started, at the time of Gita, and after the Gita, Krishna is same. But before the Gita, Arjuna was different. At the time of Gita, Arjuna was different. He was growing. After the Gita, he was totally different man. Here, Ar Krishna is not explaining his glory is out of ego. He is explaining to give understanding to Arjuna. He is explaining so that Arjuna will start experiencing him. So be very clear. When Krishna says here, I am, he means the cosmic consciousness, the egoless being, the enlightened energy. Again and again, he expresses the glory of enlightenment, glory of Atmanya. That is why he is so confident and so clear with such a clarity. With such a coolness, he explains, I am everything. Even to utter these words, you need courage. Please be very clear. Even to utter these words, you need courage. No normal man can say, I am God to somebody. If you say, you can be sure, next day you will be in asylum. <laughs> you will be... Asylum, and they will be reserving a special seat 
He is courageous enough to declare, and not only declare, the person who is listening experiences it. What is the science? What do you need for an enlightened man to declare himself as enlightened? as enlightened and to declare himself as a God and what you need for a disciple to experience that as a truth. Two things. There are so many hundreds of enlightened people declare this truth again and again and again. But some people who listen, they became enlightened like Arjuna, like Vivekananda. Ramakrishna says, who came as Rama, who came as Krishna, is residing in this body as Ramakrishna. Boldly declares that also not when he was healthy, when he was suffering by, by cancer. He is suffering from cancer, throat cancer. That time he declares boldly, who came as Rama, who came as Krishna, has come down in this body as Ramakrishna. But that word has done something into Vivekananda. Narendra has become Vivekananda. Sometimes a disciple who hears, he becomes enlightened. Sometimes the disciple who hears, he is hurt, he is disturbed. What you need to create this experience? See, be very clear. Experience of Krishna, experience of Christ, experience of Buddha, experience of Mahavira is all one and the same. As enlightenment experience, it is all one and the same. But when they expressed, why different kinds of reactions? When they express and they declare their divinity, their experience, somebody has become enlightened and somebody has ran away from Buddha, if you see, when he started telling, he is enlightened. There were many disciples around him who are practicing with him. Actually, there are few people who are staying with Buddha and practicing. When they heard that Buddha declaring enlightened, he is enlightened, they ran away from him. Some people ran away, some people became enlightened, and now, all we need is, we also should become enlightened when we listen, when we listen Krishna's words. How can we listen and how can we have that benefit? People who want to run away naturally will not come all the way, especially in this LA traffic. <laughs> now all we need to do is, we must become enlightened. How to do? With what mood we are supposed to receive these words? Arjuna. The Krishna's disciples, he is totally in love with Krishna. He is totally surrendered to Krishna. He is not ready to suspect anything. By now, he is very clear. His head has stopped working. His head has stopped working. His logic has stopped analyzing. Please be very clear. This truth should be declared only to a person who is totally, intimately related, feeling connected with the divine. He says, Mahabaho Sudme Paramambasa Yatehaṁ Priyamanaya Because you are my dear friend, you are deeply connected to me. I am revealing this truth to you. Let me explain a few basic things. Actually, when you feel deeply connected to some person, the other, pers the other will almost look like a god. You will feel so deeply related. Whether it is your husband, or your wife, or your kids, are your parents, are your master. If you feel deeply connected to the person, he will look like a god. 
whatever he does you will feel that he is divine you will feel he is divine why do you think this eternal lovers ambigavadi amaravadi devadas and this laila majnu devadas and parvati all these people they feel the other person is god they almost feel the other person is divine romeo juliet they give their life for the other person why when you feel deeply connected when you feel deeply related when you are in love with the other being he will look almost like a god all we need is just attitude of deeply connecting through the heart the problem is we forgot the way of connecting through the heart because all our relationship has become superficial now the wife is no more wife in the modern day society husband is no more husband just a boyfriend you can be with him as long as you want you can leave him when you don't want be very clear in sanskrit we don't have equivalent word for divorce we don't have equivalent word for divorce there is no equivalent word for divorce in sanskrit because the very idea never existed in hindu marriage no divorce is allowed you take in, in front of agni in front of fire you take the oath till you are alive till i am alive i will support you both of you take oath in front of agni agni means what the agni which is inside your body that only is represented by the agni which is outside jadaragni the agni which is burning in your body is only is represented by the homa agni please be very clear as long as this agni is in your body you will be alive the moment this agni in your body disappears your body will be in agni <laughs> either agni should be in your body or your body will put in agni in front of this agni you take the oath this agni sakshi that is why they say agni sakshi agni is the witness in front of that you take the oath hereby i commit till this body is alive i'll support you till this body is alive you will take care of me it's a commitment of lifetime in sanskrit we don't have equivalent word for divorce because the very concept did not exist with the cultural innovation or in a so called materialist so called developed cultures the materialistic cultures changing the wife house car is fashion once in three months the house car and wife is outdated we forgot the intense way of relating we forgot relating through heart all our relationships have become superficial it has become very superficial that is why we don't know the meaning of word falling really in love ramakrishna when he started worshiping when he started doing puja he felt that devi is there he never felt it is a stone he felt the devi is there when you deeply fall in love even a stone can become god and guide you when you don't feel connected even if god comes down you will ask for id card <laughs> you will ask for id card if you strongly feel connected if you know how to open yourself even a stone can become god and guide you that is what happened in life of ramakrishna he used to speak to devi kali devi he will talk to devi directly and let me tell you a beautiful story which happened in his life 
he used to eat the food and offer. After tasting, he will offer. All the temple authorities came and told, no, you cannot do this. It is sacrilegious. Ramakrishna said, I don't know all these things. But I feel she is my mother. How can I give the food unless I know the taste? And if you don't want me to do offer, I will stand outside and offer. But I will do the same. Anyhow, they agreed, I'll right, do whatever you want. <coughs> Not only that, when he decorates Devi, after that, he will take a small thread and keep near the nose to see whether she is really breathing or not. <laughs> whether she is really alive or not. And story says, the thread used to vibrate by the prana of Devi. And it really used to vibrate by the prana of Devi. And not only that, this is a beautiful story, all of you should understand. And it is solid truth. Please understand, it is truth. In Bengal, if any of you are from Bengal, you know, they will put the conch bangles, bangles made out of conch shell, in the hands of Devi. People, devotees will bring the conch shell bangle and they will put that bangle on the Devi's hands. The Devi Kali has got four hands. The Avayastha, Varastha. In this hand, she is holding the Katka, means the sword. In this hand, the Munda, the head of the Asura, Rakshasa. Actually, it is a philosophical representation. If you cut your ego with the Jnana Katka, the knowledge sword, she will always protect you and take care of you. Once your ego is cut, by the Jnana Katka, the knowledge sword, she will give you Abhaya and Varada. In all the three hands, it is easy to put the bandle. Because in this hand, the Katka can be removed, you can put the bandle. In this hand, you can put the bandle, in this hand also you can put the bandle. The fourth hand, the Devi statue is to hold a, the Kabbala, the head of the Rakshasa. In that hand, you cannot put the Kanch bandle. Suddenly one day, some devotee brought four bangles. In half an hour when Ramakrishna came out, so all the four bangles are there in the hands of Devi. All the four is there in the proper place. This bangle is also not broken, but it has gone into the Devi's hand. Physically impossible. Statue is also not broken and bangle is also not broken. Bangle is only this size. But the statue, the, the hand is too big. No way it is possible. And the devotee was surprised, shocked. If you read the reminiscences of Ramakrishna in original Bengali, this incident is mentioned. There is a beautiful book. Close devotees of disciples of Ramakrishna, the household of disciples, they have written their reminiscences. In that they clearly describe, the devotee is shocked. He says, Master, how did you put that bangle? Did you break it and paste it? He said, no. Or did you break the statue? No. The statue is made out of marble, black marble statue. Stone. Stone vigraha, black marble statue. Neither the statue is broken, nor the bangle is broken, but the bangle is there inside the hand. Devotee was shocked. In the other three hands, it is easy to insert. This hand, it is impossible. He asked, how did you do? Ramakrishna says, what is there? I told ma mother, mother dropped that head for a few minutes. <laughs> and she dropped that. I put the bangle. Again, I gave that. She started holding. That's all. <laughs> Please understand, if you go to Dakshinesh or Calcutta, don't miss to see that bangle. Still that bangle is there. Actually, somehow by divine grace, I had the chance to go into the Garbha Mandir and I clearly saw that bangle. With my eyes, I saw that bangle. It is there. Still it is mystery. I don't know how he put. One thing is sure, 
neither the statue is broken nor the bangle is broken that i am sure but i don't know how he inserted the energy even stone can respond never never we can think the deity in the temple is stone it is archavatara it is the very embodiment of god never think it's a stone it can straight away respond actually when i read let me tell you honestly when i read the reminiscence i did not believe i really did not believe i thought one more story all right leave it and i am telling you all to believe but i am the person i never believe anything i never trust anything i always go for verifying cross checking when i went to the temple when the priest took me inside the temple in north india you can go inside the garbhamandir even kasi vishwanath you can go and touch the vishwanath and do puja only one condition you have to take bath and come they let me inside when i went and touched the bangle completely i rotated the bangle and saw the bangle can rotate actually it rotates conch made out of conch shell it rotates neither the cut is there nor the statue is broken and still it is a mystery be very clear when you feel connected when you know how to open yourself when you know how to surrender even stone can become god and guide you even stone can become god and guide you when you don't know how to open yourself how to surrender even if god comes he will ask for id card you will not be able to relate with him now all we need is the mood of deeply in love with krishna deeply connected to the krishna deeply related to the krishna if you can open yourself to krishna when he says all about his glories it will not be just word you will feel it today yesterday he removed the enmity between the existent jivatma and paramatma arjuna is jivatma krishna is paramatma he removed the enmity between jivatma and paramatma please be very clear continuously we maintain enmity with paramatma that is why we suspect the life we are afraid when what will happen when this will happen when that will happen you are afraid of life because you don't believe you don't trust paramatman all your life insurance is because you don't trust on paramatman please be very clear your life insurance is not life insurance it is death insurance real life insurance is the devotion to the ultimate understanding the existence is taking care of you is the real life insurance understanding the parashakti is taking care of you understanding the paramatman is taking care of you is the only life insurance all other things whatever you are paying and doing that is death insurance that will go after your death to your <coughs> families who are waiting for <laughs> that who are waiting for that please be very clear that is not life insurance that is death insurance a small story a small child is trying to play in the beach you are trying to go inside the ocean mother runs behind him and says hey don't go don't go play here itself don't go into the water he says why father is going there why are you not stopping him you are stopping me she says he has got insurance <laughs> he has got enough insurance so please be very clear all our insurance is just death insurance it is not life insurance understanding the paramatman is taking care of us 
Paramatma is not enemy, is only life insurance. And one more thing, when you have a deep love or connectivity, connecting with the Paramatman, even if you die, you know, he knows where to keep you. You will have deep relaxation. You will be utterly relaxed. Even if after death, you know, he is there to protect you. He is there to guide you. Now itself, your mind is prepared to fall in tune with his energy, to obey, to surrender the ultimate will. Now itself, your body and mind will be prepared. If you live your throat, your throat, your life, fighting with Paramatman, please be very clear, your life will be hell. Nothing else can be done. All we need to do is feeling, how to start feeling connected. The last chapter, he removes the enmity from between the Jivatman and Paramatman. In this chapter, he explains the glory of Paramatman. In next chapter, he gives the experience of Jivatman and Paramatman is one and the same. One and the same. Step by step, he is leading from Visishta Advaita to Dvaita, Dvaita to Advaita, Advaita to beyond the Advaita Anubhuti. Experience is leading Arjuna to a spiritual experience, step by step. They are all not contradictory. Please be very clear. Always we fight. So, people, so many people come and ask me, Swamiji, Dvaita is right or Advaita is right? Visishta Advaita is right or Dvaita is right? Please be very clear. They are not contradictory to each other. They are complementary to each other. They are all step by step give you more and more understanding. They lead you step by step to spiritual experience. A small story. There was a Vedanta book stall in a book fair. In India, this fighting between the Advaita and Dvaita is a big fight. This Ramanuja and Shankara, very big fight. Shankarites and Ramanujites, the philosophy. Shankara Vashya is big or Ramanuja Vashya is big. The problem is both of them have not studied both deeply. <laughs> if you surrender, you will have the same experience of Advaita Anubhava. If you became, if you achieved Advaita Anubhava, you will have the deep surrender. The man who has achieved Advaita Anubhava, he will have the tremendous bhakti. See the stotras of Shankara. Baja Govindam, Baja Govindam, Govindam Baja Mudamade. Samprate san nihite kale nahinagi rakshadi tukrunjikarane. Shankara says, O oh fool, let you start meditating on Govinda Navitsal. Let you start meditate, let you start remembering the Govinda Navitsal. Nahinagi rakshadi tukrunjikarane. Means, when Yamadharma comes, when death comes, your intellectual knowledge will not help you. Your Shastra, your intellectual knowledge will not guide you. A great Advaita Jnani will always be a great Bhakta. And a great Bhakta will always be Advaita Jnani. Both are one and the same. Ramakrishna says this beautiful story. There are four people going towards a water tank. One guy says, I am going to drink Tanni, means in Tamil, the word for water in Tamil, Tanni. The other guy says, no, 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 in that tank only water is there. Tanni is not there. And the third fellow says, no, 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 I am going to go for, go and drink and pa drink Pani. Third fellow says, Nilu, means different words for water, in different languages. One fellow says, no, no, my grandfather told me it is only water. The other fellow says, my grandfather only made the tank. He says it is Tanni. Hey, my grandfather knows all the Shastra about water. He said it is, it is Nilu. 
and all this force starts fighting without even going near the tank without even seeing the tank before reaching the tank result all the four fight kill each other and die if they had little bit of patience just to peep in the tank then they would have understood all four words are same what they meant by the word water what they meant by the word thanni what they meant by what they meant by the word pani is all one and the same but these people did not have that much of patience if you experience you will understand what ramanuja says what shankara says what buddha says what madhvacharya says all is one and the same here a small story which i was just describing the vedanta book stall was there there the brahma sutra sankara vashya also was there and ramanuja vashya also was there one elderly pandit who is well read in shastras he came and one volunteer was standing in the uh, store he just wanted to know how much these fellows are read without reading they are just doing business he just asked do you know what is the difference between shankara vashya and ramanuja vashya the volunteer said 45 rupees sir <laughs> <laughs> volunteer said 45 rupees sir <laughs> all he knows is only the price not what is inside and i tell you if you go inside both are showing the same knowledge same wisdom same experience all we need to do is how to open ourselves and how to surrender to this existence how our being can strongly understand we are taken care please be very clear if existence don't want you here you cannot be here even for a single moment even a single moment you cannot be here there is no reason for existence to keep you alive if he is keeping you alive means you are wanted you are wanted in this form in this way in this place that is why you are still kept alive please be very clear god is a person who continuously cleans all the garbage he never waits every day he cleans all the old things he is a perfect energy which keeps the cleanliness they say the god cleanliness is next to godliness cleanliness is godliness it is not next to godliness god is continuously cleaning he is continuously cleaning unless you are needed you will not be kept alive you will not be kept alive just by you being kept alive he proves you are needed you are wanted you are not accident you are an incident you are not accident don't think you are alive just out of accident you are incident when we understand we are incident we will start feeling deeply connected we will start opening ourselves to the existence i always tell people trust even if you are exploited you may say what is this swami ji what kind of teaching you are giving <laughs> you are asking us to trust even if you are exploited be very clear there is only two kinds of life one is living completely with the trust another one living completely in insecure feeling person who lives in insecure feeling may have little more wealth he may have little two three more sofa seat two three more beds little bigger house but he can never rest please be very clear person who is living in, with insecure consciousness 
may have a little more comfort, but will never be blissful. Person who lives with a deep trust on the existence, he may not, he may have a little less comfort, but he never misses comfort. I have always seen people who trust the existence are always showered. Even if you see logically, he may miss little comfort, but I tell you, he will live like a god on the planet Earth. He will live like a flower on the planet Earth. He will be a blessing for the whole planet Earth. Whole planet Earth is alive just because of few people who live radiating this trust, who live radiating the divine grace. Genesis says to Abraham, if 10 pe good people are there in the country, I will not destroy that land. India is never destroyed. Still that culture is alive. Still it exists. In spite of all the invasions, in spite of all the troubles, still it exists. Nobody can shake. Nobody is able to touch because continuously it produces enlightened masters. As long as India produces enlightened masters and supplies to the world, it will not be destroyed. It will never be destroyed. India is represented. See, each country presents, gives something to the, contributes something to the humanity. For example, Western society, it contributes the social structure. They work with so many different social structures and they are contributing. German, they contribute something in the medical field. They have done so much of research in the medical field. They contribute the medical field. Japanese, in the field of technology, they contribute to the humanity. Chinese, they contribute in the level of production. Human beings are material. <laughs> in both level, they continuously produce and contribute. Some way or other, they contribute. India contributes by creating enlightened masters. Enlightened masters are the great contribution to the planet Earth from India. For anything, you can go to other countries. For spirituality, whomsoever. If they want spirituality, they have to turn towards India. All great spiritual cultures trust even if you are exploited. Be very clear. Even if you are exploited, when you live with the trust, you live like a god on the planet Earth. You live like a god on the planet Earth. Be very clear. After all, we are going to live here maximum 70 to 80 years. That I am telling maximum. 80 years, 70 to 80 years. In that 70 to 80 years, why to unnecessarily continuously torture ourselves and torture the others? When you live with an insecure consciousness, you torture yourself and you torture others. If you can live with a complete complete relaxed mood of a deep trust, I tell you, your life will be like a flower. Your life will be like a flower. Your very presence will be a blessing. Your very existence will save the planet Earth. What have you brought to lose? Please be very clear. What you brought to lose? Your insecure consciousness is nothing but ignorance. What are you going to carry to accumulate? Nothing. A simple truth. Neither we brought anything, nor we are going to take anything. A simple understanding. Whatever comes in the way, you are living and enjoying. It is a blessing. I always tell people, the energy which is 
moving inside your body if it can convert the bread into blood can't it bring bread for you please understand to do the process of converting bread into blood mechanically you need an industry which runs 3 <coughs> miles length mechanically if we have to do converting the bread into blood you need an industry which runs 3 miles length but the whole process is happening inside your body and to receive one information analyze understand and respond if we have to do through computer the process which is happening inside our brain you need a computer which is three story height you need to build a computer which needs to be three story building height and the sound which will be created will be at least 10 generator sound when people come and tell me Swamiji my mind is too noisy I don't feel the silence or peace I tell them for the amount of work which is done by your mind please be very clear it is silent <laughs> never think it is noisy for the amount of work which it is doing it is silent it is so silent the big problem is we don't trust our energy we don't trust the cos cosmic energy when it can convert the bread into blood can't it help you give you intelligence to bring blood bring bread it can guide you give you enough intelligence to bring bread for your life you can live without thinking you can live without insecure feeling you can live without fear consciousness the big problem in our life is we never try we never try these ideas in our life before it enters itself we have some argument to destroy those thoughts here if you can relax and feel deeply connected to a what Krishna says, you will be able to experience the words of Krishna which is telling about his glories, his vibhuti. Name vidusura suragana prabhavam namagarshayaha agamadir hi devanam magarshinam jasarvasaha Name vidusuragana prabhavam namagarshaya Agamadirhi Devanam Magashinanja Sarvasaha. Neither the hosts of demigods nor the great sages know my origin, my opulences. For in every respect, I am the source of the demigods and sages. He says, Neither the devatas nor the rishis know me. Means, neither the people are working in the line of comforts and luxury nor the people who are working in the line of religion and tapas both of them don't know me but I am their origin whether you are living a spiritual life or materialistic life your root is your consciousness we should understand an important thing whenever Krishna says me, me, me he means the enlightened consciousness One real incident, it happened actually. I was invited by a group of Krishna Bhaktas. I can't say Bhaktas. The Bhakta word is a beautiful word. Fanatics. <laughs> for their meeting. I went there just very humbly, very politely, in a very friendly way. Suddenly they started confronting me. or started arguing with me. They asked me, do you believe in Gita? I said, Gita is the ultimate book. I respect it and I worship it. Then why are you worshipping Shiva? I was shocked. They asked me, you should worship only Krishna. Then why are you worshipping Shiva? Why are you having Vibhuti in your forehead? 
Why are you wearing Rudraksha? I said, respecting Gita and following Gita, how it contradicts respecting Shiva and wearing Rudraksha. I was surprised. They said, no. Krishna says in the Gita, I am everything. I am everything. Name vidu suragana prabhavam na magashayaha. Aham madhiri devanam. Magashi nanja sarvasaha. I am everything. Then how can you worship Shiva? Then I said, when Krishna says I, he means the Parabrahma Swarupa of him. He means the formless consciousness of his being. He represents the universal energy. He doesn't mean just the six feet form with the flute and the pick of feather. He said, form is beautiful as long as it leads you to formlessness. There is a question by a devotee. I am worshipper of a formlessness. Can I become your disciple and follow the jhana? Please be very clear. Only you can become my disciple. <laughs> there is a question here. I am a worshipper of formlessness, formless energy. Can I become your disciple and follow meditation? Only if you are a formless worshipper, you can become my disciple. There is a strict instruction for my disciples that they should not meditate on my form. <coughs> if you have done any of our meditation camp, you know. There is a very strict instruction. You cannot meditate on my form. You should not meditate on my form. And please be very clear. If any guru tells you to meditate on his form, escape from him. <laughs> escape from him. You are falling into the net. You are falling into an indirect slavery. Never, never, never do that. You are slowly getting exploited. And I tell you one thing. Spiritual slavery is the worst slavery. Never be caught in that. The basic of spirituality is for liberation. In that, if you are caught in the slavery, then even God cannot save you. Never meditate on my form. I always tell people, never meditate on my form. And in, the, in our healing initiation, the third level initiation, there is a clear instruction. You cannot meditate on my form. Form will be here today, tomorrow it will disappear. It will disappear tomorrow. How long the forms will be there? Forms can never be here. Form is just a representation. It's like a, understand? The finger pointing to the moon. I am saying, I am telling you, there is sun, there is moon. Instead of looking at the sun or the moon, if you cut out of this finger, you will miss what I am showing. You will miss what I am representing. When the finger is pointing to the moon, if you catch the finger, you will miss the moon. You will miss the sun. Same way, master is a person Representing the divine consciousness. If you catch his form, you will miss the divine. Never, never, never be caught in the form. I always tell people, never meditate on my form. If somebody tells you to meditate on his form, be very clear, you are getting exploited. Escape. Save yourself. Save yourself. And one more thing. I explain to him, when Krishna says, I, he means the cosmic energy, universal energy. He does not mean the six feet form. If he means the six feet form, how can he say, I taught this knowledge to Vivaswan? He says, I gave this knowledge to the Ishwagu. If he represents the form with flute and pick up feather, which is thus hardly 32 years old. When Gita was delivered, Krishna was just 32 years old. If he is speaking about this form, 
how can he say i gave this knowledge to surya i gave this knowledge to the manu then from surya it came to manu how can he say he is much older when he says i he means the cosmic consciousness immediately the persons who were arguing with me they started asking how can you say the form and the energy is different when he says he means the form also when he says he means the form also i do not want to disrespect krishna's form when the form represents the energy the form is also energy no doubt but it is not that you cannot worship any other form you don't have to become fanatic the greatness of our sanatan dharma is we are not fanatics we do. so please be very clear hinduism never accepted fanaticism it never created fanatics because of this one concept all forms are rep- representations of the same divine energy he started arguing how can you say that when krishna means i he doesn't mean form he means the energy in geeta then i have to quote an important shloka there is something called anugita in bhagavad gita after the bhagavad gita mahabharata after all the war is over one day in a very relaxed mood arjuna is asking krishna please tell me whatever you taught i remember the essence but all the words i forgot because you taught me in the you taught the whole thing in the war i forgot the whole thing please repeat once more i want to listen those great teachings you will be surprised krishna says arjuna not only you i also forgot <laughs> and he says nachakyam tanmaya huyastata vaktum aseshatah param hi brahmahadi yoga yukte na tanmaya mahabharata ashwamedha parva 16th chapter and 13th shloka clearly he says arjuna i can't give the teachings again because those are said in that high enlightened spiritual eternal consciousness that time i was in that high eternal consciousness i was radiating my enlightenment that very enlightenment spoke through me the universal consciousness spoke through me the universal energy expressed itself through me that is why all those teachings came out i res- i represented the universal energy universal consciousness at that moment now i cannot give you the same teachings again he says he himself says these things are expressed in that high eternal consciousness in the enlightened consciousness understand when krishna says i he means the enlightened energy universal consciousness when i quoted this shloka the persons who were arguing with me they are very elders senior pandits swami is only but educated the spiritually the religious educate, educated pandits they said he looks very young i think well read <laughs> we cannot argue with him in the end he said i think he is well read we cannot argue with him all i want you to understand when he says i he means the universal consciousness he means the universal consciousness he starts yo ma majamanadincha veti loga maheshwaram asammoda samarthyeshu sarva pavai pramuchyate he who knows me as the unborn as the beginningless as the supreme lord of the all the worlds he only undeluded among men is freed from all sins 
again he uses the word moodaha again he uses the word fool just like yesterday again he uses the word fool and he says only he is freed from all the sins again and again what really he wants to convey what really he expects as a qualification from us to experience it there is a question one more question swami ji again and again you are saying all we need is one simple understanding exactly what am i missing tell me <laughs> i think as if i have that understanding i almost feel i am around the corner but i am not able to experience what krishna says what am i missing where i am missing please tell me Thank you.